The central limit theorem tells us that no matter what the population distribution of the data we are looking at, a distribution of sample means, x bars, will be normally distributed. This proposition seems fantastical. There is any number of weird distributions of data out there, and regardless, we can be assured that the sampling distribution of the means is normally distributed. This means, of course, that a particular sample mean came from a normal distribution. With the advent of computers, this proposition has been demonstrated by simulating the theorem rather than using pure math to develop the proof. The data is randomly generated with the help of random number generator that is provided in most computer software statistics packages. These data are then sampled multiple times, thousands of times, and the means calculated and placed in a histogram and compared to the normal distribution. An alternative approach is to generate data based upon a particular probability density function. In these cases, we actually know the density function that are the foundation of the data. Here are three examples of very different population distributions. We can watch the evolution of the sampling distribution as the size of the sample increases. Remember that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is sigma divided by the square root of n, the sample size. This means that as the sample size increases, the standard deviation decreases and the sampling distribution becomes more like the normal distribution. The top panel in each case represents the histogram for the original data. The three panels below show the histograms for 1,000 randomly drawn samples for different sample sizes, n equals 10, n equals 25, and n equals 50. As the sample size increases, the number of samples taken remains constant. The distribution of the 1,000 sample means becomes closer to the smooth line that represents the normal distribution. The first case is for data generated by a known normal distribution. It would be expected that samples from a normal distribution would result in a sampling distribution that is normally distributed. The results show this and show that even at a very small sample size, the distribution is close to the normal distribution. The next example poses a harder case. This is a uniform distribution where all observations have an equal probability of being selected. The uniform distribution, a bit amazingly, quickly approaches the normal distribution. Even with only a sample of 10, we see the sampling distribution looking very nearly the normal distribution. Our last example poses an even harder case. This is a much skewed distribution. Because the normal distribution is symmetrical, this makes this case more interesting. This last case could be an exponential, geometric, or perhaps a binomial distribution with the probability of success very small, creating the skew in the data. For skewed distributions, our intuition would say that this will take larger sample sizes to move to a normal distribution. Indeed, that is what we observe from the simulation. Nevertheless, as the sample size reaches 50, not considered a very large sample, the distribution of sample means has very decidedly gained the shape of the normal distribution. The central limit theorem's conclusion that the sampling distribution of a set of means will be normally distributed holds up even in the face of strangely distributed population data. We now see a sample mean as an observation, very much like the observations from which it arose. As just an observation with a known distribution, mean and standard deviation, we can calculate probabilities using the standard normal table and the standardizing formula, modified slightly, that we developed before. This now gives us the foundation for inferential statistics.